Good day, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. Today is Thursday. It is July 29th. The market's going to open up in about two hours, but I'm an eager beaver early bird, <laughs> as most of you know. So we got here the pre-opening plan. So as you can see here, the Nasdaq's down quite a bit in comparison to the S uh, to the Dow or the S and P. The S and P is kind of flat. The Dow's up like there's no tomorrow. Basically, this is a fragmented market. I know what I've told you. I said if the Dow's up or down less than 85 points and it's up more, but you gotta also look at the other indices. So if the Dow's up 143 points and the Nasdaq's down 23 points and the S&P's up only eight points, markets are all over the place. And that is the definition of a fragmented market. Matter of fact, these are the 10 major sectors and this is the three month six month and the one month this is my csi cumulative strength index and it's a relative strength performance and typically when the markets are not fragmented and you should pay attention to this this is important you'll see technology and discretionary next to each other you'll see consumer staples and utilities next to each other you will see um you will see industrial and basic material next to each other we're not seeing any of that right now. I mean, technology and consumer discretionary on a cumulative basis, this being this far apart is a big, big deal. Also, as, I'm, as I keep mentioning, look at the equal weighted SPY. We're literally just off of the 50 day moving average. And now look at the regular SPY, the one that has market capitalization. It looks like we're making all time highs. So there's a, there's a very, very big disparity right now between what we're seeing in the stock market because large caps are way, way up, but most other stocks are just not doing all that great. So you've got to pay attention to that. It's really, really a big deal. Like look at the mid caps, the MDY. And I talked about this yesterday, but again, it's not even at the 50 day line. This is really what the overall stock market looks like right now. So in light of that, let's talk about today's data. Yesterday we had FOMC, Fed says the economy is strong. We're not gonna do anything didn't mention a word about COVID, like it doesn't exist, like it's not running wild right now, like Arkansas does not have a worse case than they did last year. Don't even get me started on that. But today we've got GDP. This is the biggest report of the quarter, and we've got jobless claims. Jobless claims last uh, week, the number went a, a hair above 400,000. Wall Street took a minute to digest it. The number has been fairly solid. As long as the number is in line, 400,000, 385,000, somewhere in that ballpark, we should be okay. Again, this is okay. The 385,000 is okay. 419 last time was a little blip. As long as the number stays in that range, it's okay because the number has been really, really solid for a while. And then we've got the GDP. GDP is going to give us a good understanding of whether economy is expanding or not. Now, quarter over quarter, consensus is 8%. Last time we had 6.4%. If the number is 8% or higher, then the Fed can pat themselves on the back and say, yeah, we told you so, we told you so, we told you so. But if the number is lower, then they've got some explaining to do. And again, personal consumption expenditures, 11.4%. So this is the target. And again, if the number is too good, then the Fed has or may have to say, we're gonna slow down the bond purchases. If the number is slowing down, then they're gonna say, well, we, we, we told you so, we gotta keep doing what we're doing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a situation where a little bit, where it's if it's too good, it can actually work against us. And if it's too low, it can actually work in our favor. So it's a really, really strange market, but we do have the GDP and jobless claims, and those are the big reports for today. Um, let's talk about global economy. Uh, very, very little, and I've talked about most of it already. Analysts expect the data to show world's largest economy, that's America. Yes, America, not China, grew at an 8.5 annual pace in the second quarter. That's the target right now. That follows the Federal Reserve's decision to keep its accommodative, to say the least, monetary policy intact, while signaling Wednesday that the Federal Reserve recovery was on u.s economic recovery was on track really inflation transitory don't get me started really don't get me started chinese internet shares slid earlier we're looking to see if that's going to have a little bit of a pickup beijing was considering restrictions on for-profit education ventures i think that is ridiculous ridiculous and meanwhile wall street is awaiting earnings report from amazon to see how they're going to do amazon's a very instrumental company because it impacts a lot of people around the world. It's a good indication of how the economy is humming along. 
I mean, it's not a fail safe, but it is a good thing. Now, the markets are choppy. There's not a lot of action. And I would rather you guys take short positions than be heroes and take long positions. Because right now, based on momentum levels, and I've showed you guys these momentum levels. I mean, you got to see this. You've got to see this. If you've missed a few of my videos this week, look at this. 71% of stocks on the NASDAQ 100, the top 100 NASDAQ stocks, the FANG stocks, is trading above the 50-day moving average. Look at the NASDAQ composite. 71% versus 44%. Less than 50% of stocks in the NASDAQ are trading above the 50-day moving average. The market is very, very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Especially with 81% of stocks trading above the 200-day moving average. And let me show you how that looks historically. We're literally sitting right here. And if this thing cools off a little more, oh boy, we're going to go down. So the market is vulnerable. And I don't think we're necessarily going to have a major shakeout. But I do believe, I do believe we need to see the SPY, the capitalized weighted S&P 500. I think we need to see it move to the 50-day moving average, which would put the equal weighted SPY in the twilight zone. And therefore... I'm a little bit bearish than neutral, and I would rather focus on overreactions than waiting for than looking for pullbacks right now, especially with only 100 stocks or 120 stocks. Let's see, making 90-day highs. Let's see here, uh, 90 day break, 125 stocks to 13 stocks making 90-day lows. This is uh, th this market is just not really all, all that bullish. That's only 125 stocks out of all the stocks. So that's not a very bullish market. Therefore, I think we're gonna be choppy and sideways for quite some time. And I don't think this GDP or the Fed is gonna help anything. So right now, I think we could fill the gap. This is a gap trade. Boeing, BA, you know, all those airlines crashing. <laughs> it hasn't been doing so well. The company is not doing that great. We, we, we broke to the 50-day line and then bounced off of it to the downside. I think we're gonna hit the 200-day line. We're at 231, I think we're gonna hit the 220 level. Boeing, short to fill the gap. Next stock to fill the gap, the Chef's Warehouse, C-H-E-F. I think this stock is gonna fill the gap. Lower highs, bouncing off the 50-day line, closing near the bottom, and it's gonna fill this gap between 29 and 27. And if you look at the stock, we all know what Boeing does, I'm not gonna go into details. But uh, Chef's is a general line, well, uh, wholesale grocery store. Um, Chef's Warehouse distributes specialty food products in the, in the United States, culinary schools, specialty food stores. If we have COVID, the last, if COVID keeps running wild, the last thing anybody's going to be focused on is culinary. People are going to be focused on McDonald's and consumer staples. So be careful. And again, I think the Chef's Warehouse, C-H-E-F, I love the ticker symbol, and Boeing are going to be going south and filling the gap. So today... I've got two stocks that look to be filling the gap in the very, very near term. Don't go anywhere. I've got something really important for you, something you need to pay attention to. Now, why get stuck doing all the research when traders can have decades of knowledge and experience in just one membership, one membership, one. With Overdrive Profits, members have the opportunity to multiply their gains and grow their trading account as fast as possible. And this isn't just a place to get trades. Members also get multiple strategies, private training materials, and exclusive tools to put their trade success into overdrive. Not only, not only will you get a chance to make gains of 75.64% on ALB, Albemarle, 64.63% on Kroger, but they also, you will also get a chance to learn about the pros trades with the trading resources available. Folks, I'm going to teach you how to trade like a pro with overdrive profits and you'll get signals. I mean, signals like 75% on Albemarle, 64% on Kroger. F folks, you want to check out overdrive profits. It's a hot service. It's a solid service. And me, I'm going to be driving overdrive profits into your account. At least that's what the goal is, okay? Nobody has a crystal ball. Well, I do have one right there. Again, overdrive profits. It's a chance for new members to get gains like 75%, 64%. And these are not Amazon or eBay. These are Kroger and Albemarle. Regular stocks. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna pick $1,000 stocks. You get options and the underlying. You gotta check out overdrive profits. And click the link below to take advantage of this amazing deal. It's only being offered for a limited time. Don't miss out. 
Make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're watching on YouTube. Stay ahead of the market by being the first to be notified when I post more videos like this with hot picks for you. Bye guys, have a great, great day and I'll see you tomorrow.